details. Nibeline falls into a donut hole and goes to Paris. Ah, Nibeline, sweet Nibeline, was neat and spick and span and clean. She told the truth, indeed she did, and always did, as she was bid. Yet she nibbled like a bowl, and soon she felt far too full. Chapter 1 Once upon a time, there was a tidy little goop girl named Nibeline, who loved to nibble at just about everything she saw. When she was having her lunch with her good goop friend, Gablia, she would start nibbling at all the tasty tidbits on Gablia's plate while she was so busy talking that she never even noticed that her lunch was disappearing. Nibeline was always on the lookout for a delicious new snack. Her absolute favorite was donuts. She loved donuts of every kind. Jelly donuts, chocolate donuts, powdered donuts, sprinkle-covered donuts, glazed donuts. They were all delicious. If Nibeline saw a donut, she couldn't resist it. She just had to have a tiny nibble, no matter to whom it belonged. One spring day, Nibeline was walking through the dazzling Cherry Blossom Park by her house. All of the trees were in full bloom, and they looked like cotton candy. Nibeline began to daydream about cotton candy when she saw a pink sugar donut with a bite out of it sitting on a table all by itself. She quickly looked around, and she didn't see anyone, or at least anyone who looked like they were missing a donut. Hmm, thought Nibeline. Surely this donut is meant to be eaten. Perhaps it's been abandoned by its owner. Poor donut. Someone must eat it. Nibeline knew better than to eat food left in the middle of a park, but she could hardly resist the pink sprinkled donut. She went right up to the donut and leaned in so she could smell it. She kept waiting for someone to come over and grab it, but no one did. A fresh, heavenly bakery scent filled the air. So Nibeline leaned in closer, and as she did, her little goop body began to shrink so her nose could get closer. As she shrank, she suddenly found herself being sucked into the vortex of the donut hole. Chapter 2 Nibeline closed her eyes as she went straight through the hole, spinning and smelling the most delicious aroma of freshly baked pastries. She heard charming music, and it was as if she was in some sort of light and airy pastry heaven somewhere on the edge of a French cloud. Soon the spinning slowed down, and Nibeline could feel herself land on a soft carpet that felt like a giant pink rose. Then she felt a tiny scratch scratch at her leg, and she looked down and saw a little pug dog dressed up in a leopard scarf and a beret. Why, hello, little doggy, said Nibeline. She had never seen a dog so dressed up, and she was enchanted by this funny looking dog in a beret. The dog's name was Esmeralda and she normally didn't like strangers at all. In fact, Esmeralda usually turned up her nose at strangers and made a grunty noise and then walked away. But she didn't do that with Nibeline. Nibeline was so friendly right off the bat that Esmeralda decided she rather liked her. But she all the same decided to give her a bit of a hard time. Who are you? And what are you doing in my patisserie? said Esmeralda, in a rather stern tone, with a French accent. My name is Nibeline, and I am a goop, and I just landed here by smelling a donut. Esmeralda furrowed her brow, which was already quite wrinkly. Who was this strange goop creature, and why would she smell a donut? Esmeralda couldn't stand donuts. She thought they were out of fashion. 
Esmeralda lived in a French patisserie, and nothing could compare to that, especially a doughnut. But Nibeline wasn't put off by Esmeralda's stern manner. Instead, she said, Oh, stop being such a snob, Esmeralda, and tell me what a patisserie is, and do tell me where you got such a beautiful name. Esmeralda was rather pleased when she heard this. She loved for people to admire anything about her, especially her sense of style and her name. Well, a patisserie is a French bakery, and it is full of delicious cakes. Come, let me show you. And with that, Esmeralda gave Nibeline a tour of her French patisserie. The patisserie didn't actually belong to Esmeralda. It belonged to her maîtresse, Madame Pompidou. But Esmeralda considered it her own. As they walked around the patisserie, Nibeline saw every kind of pastry and cake imaginable. Macaroons, millefeuille, tarte aux pommes, petite four. The treats went on and on. Nibeline never even knew that such delights existed, and she couldn't believe she had lived her entire little goop life without tasting a French pastry. Chapter 3 She began to nibble everything she saw. Esmeralda told her to slow down, that the French considered it very rude to gobble down food as though it were going to disappear. Esmeralda also explained to her how French people love to take their time and savor every morsel. Nibeline decided she could slow down a bit. After all, there seemed to be an endless supply of pastries, so she slowly started savoring a bite of fruit tart. It was a raspberry tart, or, in French, tarte aux framboises, and the raspberries burst with flavor as Nibeline rolled them around in her mouth. Mmm, thought Nibeline. I don't think I have ever had such an exquisite tart in my entire life. I think I must slow down and savor my food more often. She looked down at Esmeralda to tell her how delicious the tart was when it occurred to her that Esmeralda hadn't yet told her how she got her name. How did you ever get a name like Esmeralda? asked Nibeline. My maîtresse, Madame Pompidou, named me after Esmeralda in the hunchback of Notre Dame because she loves that story. What is the hunchback of Notre Dame? asked Nibeline. Why, you have never heard about the famous story of an ugly hunchback that lives high in the towers of Notre Dame? asked Esmeralda. Oh, never, please tell me, begged Nibeline with excitement. Oh, I will do better than that. I will show you, announced Esmeralda. Esmeralda led Nibeline out into the streets of Paris, and they started to walk towards Notre Dame one of the most famous cathedrals in the world. As they ambled through the streets of Paris, Esmeralda explained, Notre Dame is a large cathedral on an island in the middle of Paris, and it has many steps that go to the top towers with marvelous views of Paris. There is a famous French story called The Hunchback of Notre Dame, in which the hunchback was named Quasimodo. He was so ugly and hunched over that he didn't have any friends. He lived alone in the bell tower of Notre Dame. Whenever anyone saw him, they laughed and made fun of him, so he always tried to stay hidden. However, there was one person who was very kind to Quasimoto, and her name was Esmeralda. She was a beautiful gypsy girl who gave Quasimoto water once, when no one else would. My maîtresse thinks that I am beautiful and kind, so she named me Esmeralda. Oh, marvelous, said Nibeline. Can we go to the top of Notre Dame Towers and look out over Paris? Yes, we can, but there are many stairs to go up, so it can be tiring. And there are also gargoyles guarding Notre Dame, 
so you have to be sure to follow all the rules when you go inside. What is a gargoyle? asked Nibbeline with a laugh. The word just sounded so funny. I would not laugh at gargoyles if I were you. They have been around for hundreds of years, and they keep watch over Notre Dame. There are thousands of them, and you will see them everywhere. And they see you. They are made of stone, but they can come to life if they see something they don't like. Nibbeline just laughed. How could something made of stone come to life? Chapter 4 Soon Nibbeline and Esmeralda arrived at Notre Dame. It was enormous. Nibbeline had never seen such an old, magnificent building in her life. As she looked up, she saw some scary-looking statues poking out from Notre Dame. What are those? she asked Esmeralda. Those are the gargoyles that I was telling you about, said Esmeralda. Like I said, be sure and obey the rules. Nibbeline and Esmeralda slipped into Notre Dame just in time as it was about to close. Nibbeline gave the guard her best smile, and he allowed them to sneak up the south tower steps to start the long walk to the top, but not before he reminded them that there was no eating in Notre Dame. There are 387 steps to the top of the tower, said Esmeralda, but it is worth it once you get to the top. At first, Nibbeline thought she heard wrong. 387 steps? How could she possibly walk up 387 steps, especially without a snack? Esmeralda had already started scurrying up the spiral steps with Nibbeline right behind her. She counted the steps as she went, and by the time she got to step 217, Nibbeline was hungry again. She put her little goop hand in her pocket and reached for a croissant that she had taken from the patisserie in case she needed an emergency snack. Then she remembered she wasn't supposed to eat in Notre Dame. She looked around, and no one was there. Esmeralda was at least ten steps ahead of her, so no one would know if she just took one quick nibble. Nibbeline sat down on step 217 and pulled the croissant out of her pocket. She took a bite, and it was so delicious that she closed her eyes for just a moment to savor the warm, crusty pastry. The buttery croissant melted on her tongue, and Nibbeline couldn't stop after one bite, so she kept nibbling and nibbling and soon she felt so full she could hardly move. After all, she had been eating pastries all day, and now she was stuffing herself with a croissant. Nibbeline started to feel drowsy, so she closed her eyes. When she opened her eyes, it was quiet and dark in the stairwell, and she couldn't hear Esmeralda. Nibbeline was frightened as she thought of the gargoyles, she quickly stuffed all her croissant crumbs into her tiny beret, but it was too late. There was a loud swooshing noise in the stairwell that sounded like bats flying. Nibbeline's body was frozen with fear. She looked up to see what it was, and she came face to face with a giant gargoyle who had a wide open mouth. Before she could even blink, the gargoyle plucked Nibbeline up with his jaws by her little beret, and off they flew to his perch on Notre Dame, with Nibbeline dangling far above Paris. Chapter 5 Nibbeline felt a mixture of terror and excitement. She had just been flown around by a gargoyle, and now she had the most marvelous view of Paris. But she was hanging from the jaws of a stone statue. How was she going to escape the gargoyle? He sat straight and proud and didn't make a noise. Nibbeline knew why the gargoyle took her, and she thought of Esmeralda's warning. She shouldn't have been eating in Notre Dame. I wonder where Esmeralda is, thought Nibbeline. 
She's probably looking for me, and she must be worried. She's probably mad at me because I ate in Notre Dame. She glanced up at the gargoyle. He was a statue again, and he didn't move. Nibeline apologized for eating in Notre Dame, but it didn't make any difference. He was made of stone and couldn't hear her. She may have been a naughty little goop, but Nibeline was also a very clever one. She looked down at her half-eaten croissant and thought, if only the gargoyle knew how delicious this was, he would understand why she couldn't resist eating it. She took the last half of the croissant and stretched her tiny hand up to the gargoyle's mouth and shoved it straight into his open jaws. The gargoyle was coming to life. It was true. He had never tasted a croissant before, and the buttery pastry melted his stone mouth. The gargoyle opened his jaws to savor the croissant, and Nibeline fell straight from his mouth and down, down, down to Paris. She stared at all the other stone gargoyles as she floated by, and she felt just a little bit sad for them, because they would probably never know what a croissant tasted like. I wouldn't want to be made of stone. Oh my, I'm going to land on stone, she thought to herself as she directed her attention to the fast approaching ground. Nibeline had to make a split-second decision before she hit the ground, and she reached out and grabbed on to the closest gargoyle. The gargoyle was about to snatch her with his jaws, so she used all her might and flung herself towards the river far below. Chapter 6 Nibeline plopped safely in the Seine River that cuts right through Paris. She quickly popped out of the Seine onto the nearby quay. Once on land, Nibeline ran up to the entrance of Notre Dame, where she found a somewhat irritated Esmeralda swinging her tail. Oh, Esmeralda, you won't believe what happened to me. What, a gargoyle snatched you up? said Esmeralda with a very smug little smile. Why, yes, he did. How did you know? exclaimed Nibeline. I told you, the gargoyles were watching. But you didn't believe me. You ate far too many pastries today, didn't you? I did, said Nibeline. Sometimes I just can't help myself. I love food, but I know now it tastes better and I feel better when I savor every bite instead of eating so much. You are not only wise, but a very chic chien. That means dog in Paris, right? And I should have listened to you. I am a Parisian chien. Let's be clear about that. But yes, I am marvelous and chic. Now come along with me. Nibeline happily followed Esmeralda back to Madame Pompidou's patisserie, where she stuffed as many pastries as she could fit into her beret. After all, she was taking them back to share with the other goops. Then she asked Esmeralda how to get back to Goop World. I know you will know how to get me back to Goop World, because you are wise and marvelous. Oh, but of course, ma petite chérie, just go find the donuts in Madame Pompidou's patisserie and look very deep into a donut hole, and you will be sucked back into the donut vortex. But remember this, if you eat the pastries on your way back, you will fall asleep and never get back to Goop World. You must wait for the right time to eat treats. And that is exactly what Nibeline did. Once she arrived safely back in Goop World, Nibeline set off to find her good Goop friend Pie Jam and give him a French pastry. But Pie Jam was nowhere to be found. Fairies had taken him away to the fairy swamps in Scotland. But that is a tale for another time. Hey there, it's Maria. Thanks for listening to Goop Tales. If you want to listen to another one, all you have to do is click on your screen and you can. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to Goop Tales and you'll always be notified when there's a new one.